Today we're talking about Cardano key derivation. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about key derivation, and that's the concept of how you have a mnemonic phrase in your wallet. That mnemonic phrase is then turned into keys, and those keys can have more and more keys until you have a wallet full of different keys it controls. And you can then control all the funds in that wallet. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. So Cardano key derivation, the concept is you have this root key and then from that you can derive a whole bunch of private keys and a whole bunch of public keys. The public keys, as you saw in our past videos, those public keys we turn into addresses that then you can send funds to and those, um, those public keys are kind of the destination for those funds. The private keys are used when you want to unlock those funds and actually send them to somebody else. So, how do we create root key from mnemonics? Um, if you remember, this is the, the wallet we used in, in one of our past videos, uh, Cash Antique Chimney, this one. And if you recall, each one of these um, mnemonic words translates into 11 bits of, of data, and each one of those is a given word in the, in the BIP39 word list. And so what we do is we take each of all of these bits and instead of 11, we break them down into uh, bytes, which is eight bits, and then we turn that into hex. And what we get out of that is this salt, um, the 23413. And then we actually have a checksum at the end, if you remember. There's, um, and so we actually strip off the eight, eight bits of checksum at the end, which is CA in this case. So we end up with a salt phrase. Um, in most cases, the password is empty. You can also have a wallet with a password. Some, some wallets allow passwords. I think by default, Daedalus has an empty password. Um, that's different from your spending password, which is what is used to encrypt their internal database. Anyway, we can talk about that another day. Uh, we then run it through a, a password hash. And the algorithm we use for that is this... Uh, PB key derivation, derivation format 2 with HMAC SHA-512. And we run it through so many iterations and we want to get out in the end 96 bytes of data. Um, so once we do that, we hash the password. And then we also have to run it through this, um, this tweak bits function and that tweak bits um, shifts a couple of the bits that allows the, the keys to work with um, with ED25519 keys. This, this algorithm originally comes from Bitcoin where they use uh, different key types. In Cardano we use ED25519 keys. And so in the end we get out this uh, root key, this E83 down here. Uh, so next we need to talk about key derivation paths. So once we have the root key we run a, de a derive function on that key to get all the other keys. And so paths have each of these uh, things separated by slashes to kind of give you a, a short way of describing the derivation path. So each key has a purpose, a coin type, which would represent ADA. You could have a wallet that, you know, holds, you know, ADA, Bitcoins, Litecoins, whatever. That would be a different coin type. Then you have an account. You can have any number of accounts. Typically in you know, a Daedalus wallet, it just uses account zero. Then you also have a, um, the next path is change. And that can be like um, internal, external, or it can be you know, a, a state key, the number there. And then you have an index. That, that's the actual key number that we're going to derive. You also see these H's and S's. They can also be represented by a tick mark. So H represents a hard derived path. And what that means is, is that you're, you're not allowed to get at the, the private key or the, you're not allowed to make a public version of the key uh, from, that, from that private key. If it's an S, that's a soft derived thing. And that means you can get 
at the uh, the public version of that key if you want to. So you'll notice here, here's some example paths. So here's just a, a receiving key. Like if you looked in your Daedalus wallet, the very first key in the receive key list would have a derived path of this, 1852, 1815, 000. zero, zero. That would be the kind of your base address is what it's also called. The second one would be the same thing, but it would have a one for the index. Um, the change key, that's like if you're sending funds out and you want funds to come back to you, um, that would be something that would not be, be published in the in the key list, but you can also have a separate derivation path for that. That's where we have a one in this uh, change spot. And then if we had a two in that spot, that would be the path for state keys. Now normally in a Daedalus wallet, you're only using the very first state key. You're not deriving multiple until maybe if we get to uh, multi-delegation wallets, then you might see something other than a one here. So where do these numbers come from? The 1852 for our purpose and the coin type 1815. Um, typically in, um, this is the, the BIP44 standard. Typically this 1852 would be a 44 if you're in the Bitcoin world. Um, in Cardano, they've decided to make it 1852, which is the year of uh, Ada Lovelace's death. And our coin type is the year of her birth, 1815. So I grabbed that from Wikipedia. So let's take a look at uh, a testnet wallet here called Nerd Out. And you'll notice if you dig down into more and the extra settings, you can get down to this wallet public key. So that is, if we, if we go back to the previous screen, that, that wallet public key, that's this account level um, that they're, they're, letting you sh they're letting you see if you want. And so we can take a look at that. If we look at the BEC32 value of that, if we decode it, you'll notice it starts with 19F6. Now remember that, we'll come back to that in a bit. So what do we want to do if we want to build all of these derived keys ourselves? So I've taken the liberty, I'm using a bit of some Emergo code. They've created a, a library called Cardano Serialization Lib. It's, uh, it's used internally by the Uroi wallet, but you can write some Node um, Node.js code and talk to it and do things like derive your own keys. So here I've taken the mnemonic. We're deriving the entropy value from it. So it's just doing that conversion automatically that I had done manually and then dropping the extra checksum at the end. And then we're printing that out as the root key. You'll see that gets printed out here, that 23 well, our entropy is the 2341. You saw that in the, the previous code I had manually converted. And then we've got our, our root key. And then we're going to derive the account private key. And that's where we put in our 1852, 1815, zero, and all of those are hardened. So hardening means you just add this big number to it. So you, um, you make the number bigger and that prevents it from getting the public key out of that. And then we're going to convert that to a public key because we're, um, we're allowed to get the public key for that one. And then you'll see here what I'm doing on the, the little window here is I'm BEC32 decoding it and then you'll see this 19F6C. So the wallet is showing us that same value down here as what we've created manually. And then I've gone on and I've derived a couple other keys. Um, I'm not going to show you the guts of this derive function just because it's not that interesting. It's it's more HMAC SHA-512 stuff and then bit twiddling just like we did to get the root key. Um, but basically you run that function over and over with different values to derive additional keys. So here we're deriving a UTXO public key. That's like a receive key. Uh, we're deriving the second one into the list, and then we're also deriving a state key so that we can smash those together and um, create a base address. So that's what this is doing here, down here at the bottom, is we're creating a couple of base addresses by appending our state key to the UTXO public key. And you remember from last week we talked about that, how the, 
The keys in the date of this wallet are just a payment key smashed together with a state key and then a special header to, to denote what type of key it is. So let's move on here to verifying some of those values. So if we look in the Daedalus wallet at our receiving addresses, at these first two that it derived in the wallet, uh, test one QR03, you see here we have QR03, and then the second one QRQ8S, QRQ8S. So we know that we're on the right track. We're able to derive the exact same thing that the Daedalus wallet is doing with our own code. So now let's talk about some bonus stuff. Now that you know how to derive keys and, and how that all works and how they're all chained together from that root key. So there's something called a pointer address. A pointer address is just like a state key, uh, you know, where it has both the main key and the state key, except this time we don't include the state key in the address. We just have a pointer to a place on the blockchain where that staking address was registered. And this is interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, it can be shorter. You see at the bottom here is this pointer address. So that's just like one of these giant staking keys, but it does the, the, the same thing. That stake is still applied to that staking key and rewards will still land in that, that staking keys reward account. But think about this for a minute. Let's say you have a DeFi app and instead of people depositing their ADA and then suddenly that ADA becomes unstaked or staked to one of the pools that that DeFi company owns, maybe you still want to keep that staked with your community pool that you have a relationship with. So that DeFi app, what they can do is they can generate receiving addresses that include a pointer to your stake key. So that means if you deposit into some liquidity pool or or contract, if they support this, if they choose to support this, which I think they should, they could create that address specially for you with a pointer to your staking address on the chain. Then your rewards still land in your Daedalus or your Roy wallet while you're doing other stuff and earning other rewards maybe for uh, whatever type of system uh, the DeFi app is doing. So anyway, I thought that was kind of a, a neat little thing. So let's demo that now. So in this wallet, I've moved uh, some ADA into it. I have set up a send. I'm going to send everything to this address. Now this address represents the same uh, wallet, but with the, the pointer to where the state key is registered. And then you see that I sent that. The transaction went through but yet all of my, my ADA minus the transaction fee is still on the wallet. It hasn't gone anywhere. This wallet can still deal with keys that are pointer addresses. So with that, nerd out.